All right, so this is a test review for the power exponential and log functions unit test in Calc with applications. Um, I don't really have enough room on my actual sheet, so I'll use some separate paper. Number one, write an exponential growth model. Oh, use V. Initial value, one plus R to the T. And I'm gonna add the one plus percent to get my answer for A. B, sketch a graph. My initial value is 125 and it's exponential growth. How much will it be worth in 2005? Well, since 2000 was the initial year, 2005 is five years later. So $159.54, you have to round that appropriately. Make sure to round your money. All right, number one. Number two. Now, depending on what version of the test review you have, if it is in the year 2018 or earlier, your number one will look a little different. If you are watching this video and your number one looks different, you may, or number two, excuse me, you may update it to this problem. The X's are going by integer values, they go up by one, and the direction, there's only one table, and the directions say, is it linear or exponential, and then write an equation. So to test, if it's linear, the difference in my Y values will be constant. I don't think that's the case, but let me just check. Those are not the same number, they're not even close. So let's check the ratio. If the ratio is constant, it's exponential. And that works. Check all of them just to be sure. Okay, so that is 0.25. So that means to multiply, to go to each row, you multiply by 0.25. In an exponential function, that is the B value, as long as X's are going up by one. The A value is the initial amount when X is zero, which is 1.5. Okay, number three, the half-life, write a model. All right, doesn't tell me an initial value. Half-life, T over 22 years, so that's the half-life value. After 66 years, how much of 1,000 grams will be left? So 1,000 is the initial value. If you have an older calculator like me, don't forget you need to group your exponent in parentheses and always put units on your answer. All right, for number four, well, there's no part D. When does x to the fourth dominate over two to the x? When does two to the x dominate? Okay, so first off, dominate means higher y value. Um, the exponential function will be bigger as x goes to infinity. So I think x to the fourth will be bigger closer to zero. So in my calculator, I've got x to the fourth and two to the x. And I have an older calculator, but if I arrow over to here and hit enter, it changes that function to a bold. So when I hit graph, let me just do zoom six to start. When I graph, the exponential will be bold, and that way I'll be able to see a difference. Okay, so automatically right here, I can see the graphs intersect. So if I sketch that, what number is this? Four. Okay. If here's the x to the fourth, here's my exponential, this point, is second trace, choice five is intersect, arrow to the spot and hit enter three times at 1.24.
So this is when x is 1.24. Well, at this point, the quadrat, the x to the fourth, the power function is higher, so I know that's gonna have to change again. So I'm gonna change my window and look further out in the x. So let's go to 20. Um, since my function's x to the fourth, let's see, 20 to the fourth is 160,000. So I'm gonna make my y max 200,000. All right, so there's my x power function. Oh, and there's my exponential, and it intersects again right here. So let's find where that is. Second, trace, choice five, arrow to the right. Hit enter three times, and that's at 16. So if I look further out, Oh, I'm not drawing that right. Okay, anyway, over here they're gonna cross again where this x value is 16. So x to the fourth is larger between 1.24 and 16. Two to the x is larger, well, right here. Oh, I didn't find this negative one. I'll go back and do that. From some number, to 1.24 and then bigger than 16. So let me find this third point. Let me make my window small again. Hit zoom six. So that's over here on the left of the y-axis. Negative 0.86. So C, when will the functions be the same? That's when X is negative 0.86, when X was 1.24, and when X was 16. All three of those points, one, two, and all the way over here at three. Oop, I can't see the, the third one. So in general for number four, as X goes to infinity, the exponential function will be larger because the x is the exponent, so the exponent will automatically be larger than a const, than an exponent that's not changing. All right, number five. You invest $2,000 at an annual rate of 4%. What will your balance be? So this is compound interest. Monthly, there's 12 months times 10 years. So our amount of money is $2,981.67. Round that appropriately on your test. All right, continuously is the initial deposit E to the RT. So that's $2,986.65. Effective annual yield only uses the base part of the um, compound interest formula quarterly. So when we calculate that, I want a percent, but 1.04 is more than 100%. So what we do is we take away the one and change that decimal to a percent. So 4.06% is the effective annual yield for this interest rate. Find the number of years to double. All right, I need some paper for that. So double is $4,000. So compounded, oh, continuously, whoops. E to the R T. And we have to solve for T. 
I'm going to divide by 2,000. And then to solve this function, I'm going to ln both sides. Because that allows me to take this exponent and put it at the coefficient. And then I can evaluate ln of e is 1. So this is ln of 2 equals 0.04t. I'm going to divide by 0.04. And we get 17.4. Three years. And it doesn't tell me what to round to, so two decimal places is good. All right, number six. Determine the amount of money that you should invest to get $6,000 compounded daily for five years. Okay, so I'm going to type this all in my calculator. Six thousand equals p times one point one oh five dot 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 dot. So to solve, I'm going to divide this number to the left, but I want to use the whole decimal. So in my calculator, I'm going to do second negative, and it copies and pastes the whole answer for me to get an exact value of $5,429.04. All right, to the back. Express in terms of logs. Oops, you can't see that. I put my stickers there so I knew where my camera could see. Okay, express logs is A, B, and or C. So we're gonna use our properties. When the argument is multiplied, we can expand our logs with addition. When the denominator is there, so technically the denominator is a product, so there's addition between the log of B and the log of C. But since it's all in the denominator, I can distribute the negative, and my final answer would be ln of A minus ln of B minus ln of C. So I'm going to do the same process for C, but now all these exponents come down to be the coefficient. The square root is an exponent of a half. And that's how I get the final answer for C. So eight is gonna go the other way. Uh oh, this is a typing mistake, I'll fix that. So here with addition between the logarithms, we can condense the log and multiply the argument. X three just looks backwards, so that's why I write three X. This one fourth can become the exponent of the entire 5x. And then here, this should be an addition in between, uh, I think, let me see, did I print the answers? No. Bear with me for one moment while I look up what the answer should be so I know what sign should be in between. 8c. Oh, it should be subtraction. Oh, Miss Weiss. Okay, sorry. The subtraction's right here. All right, this pro. Oh, this is what I was doing wrong. I was visualizing it like this. But those parentheses aren't there. But I was, my eyeball was seeing x minus 3 grouped. But that's not right. That was my issue. Okay, this 3 can become the exponent. because it's like the same property as B. This is wrong. Now, subtraction allows me to combine my argument with division. So here's the answer for C. Okay, simplify. A is saying 
9a. 2 to what power is 1 eighth? Well, I can make the 1 eighth into 2 to the third, but because it's in the denominator, it's a negative 3. So the what power is negative 3. So the answer to A is negative 3. B is saying E to what power is E to the negative 2? Well, that's just negative 2. And I cannot do C until I use my properties of logarithms to separate the argument. Now, this, the 2 can become the coefficient. Ln of E is 1. And that is my final answer for C. Solve. Okay, um, there's a few different strategies you can use for solving. I like to stick with the same one where I ln both sides. When I do that, and I say ln, ln, that allows the x to become the coefficient. So now to finish solving, I can divide ln of 10 to the right and get 1.623, the whole thing, um, round to three decimal places, so 1.623. So then for B, when I ln both sides, the X becomes the coefficient, and then ln of E is one. So X is the ln of 72, 4.277. And then for C, I cannot do anything with a log until I isolate the exponential. So first we have to divide by five. Then if I ln both sides, I get x plus two equals the ln of four. And I'm gonna subtract the two to the right to solve and we get negative 0.614. All right, last but not least, graph. Then do all the properties. This is an exponential decay with an initial value at five, my horizontal asymptote. You could use your calculator if you wanted. The logarithm has a vertical asymptote. Looks like this. And then for our properties, the domain of an exponential is all reals. This exponential has a range of y is greater than zero. For n behavior, you have to do both left and right. As x goes to infinity, y is approaching zero. As x goes to negative infinity, y is going to infinity. The zeros is technically an x-intercept, so this one has none. The y-intercept is 5. The asymptote is the line y equals 0. It is bending in an upward direction, so concavity is up. And this entire graph is decreasing on all real numbers. For the logarithm, your domain is x is greater than 0, and the range is all reals. For n behavior, as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, well, that does not exist. The graph does not go to negative infinity, so there is no left n behavior. The x-intercept is right here at 1. The y-intercept is none. The asymptote is the vertical line, x equals 0. It's bending down, so it's concave down, and it is increasing for every x greater than zero. And then there's one more test review page. Um, it's all multiple choice. Nice, let's do it. Which of the following is true for the exponential function? Five, one half x. So, if I think about that graph, it's an exponential decay like this. The range is all reals, that is not true. The asymptote is y equals zero, yes. The function is even, oops, you can't see it, sorry. There's no y-axis symmetry, so it is two only. 
Which of the following is larger for y's as x goes to infinity? Ignore the coefficients. The 20,000, the 2,000, that does not matter. I'm only looking for exponents. So which graph will have the highest exponent? Oh, the exponential. Exponential will always dominate over a power function as x goes to infinity. If a was not a choice, then e would be the next, and then d, then c, then b. Which of the following is true for all logs where a ln of x? a is greater than 0, and b is greater than 0. All right, so a is the coefficient. If it's greater than 0, it's not going to change any reflections. Like a negative a would be a reflection, so that would change the graph. So since it's greater than 0, if it's a fraction, it's just going to stretch or shrink the graph vertically, so that's not going to change. Okay, so the domain, that's correct, is greater than 0. The x-intercept is 1. That's correct because there's no shift left or right, and it is concave up. No, that's wrong. It's concave down. So it is 1 and 2. What is the effective annual yield? So I'm only going to use this monthly. All right, let's see. How many decimal places we got here? Two. So this three does not round the nine. So 4.59%. Sorry, there's a glare there. And then lastly, to simplify this, I first have to use my properties of logarithms to separate the argument. And then ln of e is one. So ln of two plus four, a. Make sure you can do the entire test review with no help confidently for your test.